Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. A few weeks ago, I finally managed to see the new Apollo 11 documentary directed by Todd Miller. And for me, this was just incredible to watch. Of course, it's been 50 years since Apollo 11 landed on the moon back in July uh, of 1969. This is without doubt the greatest achievement by the human race, being our first, of course, physical steps on a new world, a world that we did not evolve on, a world that, as far as we know, is inhospitable to any life. The Apollo missions created a need for technologies that revolutionized our world. It provided us with stunning images of our own tiny planet. It helped research and lead environmental efforts to protect our only home. And then perhaps most importantly, the Apollo missions were the motivation for other exploration such as the Voyager missions, the landings of the rovers on Mars, landing freaking probes on comets and sending out others past Pluto. Gene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt successfully lifted off from the lunar surface in the ascent stage of the lunar module on December 14th in 1972. And sadly, that was the very last time humans touched the surface. Now there's currently a great deal of talk from NASA and government representatives about returning humans to the surface of the moon by 2024. There's also an equal amount of debate about whether NASA can even get close to doing this with current proposed funding, even after the increases by the current government. Is there another way though? Could SpaceX potentially beat NASA back to the moon? We'll get back to SpaceX's claim that they could potentially land on the moon within two years. First, we need to take a look into a recent article from Time. Elon Musk had an awesome in-depth conversation with space reporter Jeffrey Kluger. And if you haven't absorbed any of this yet, I found this a really great read. Elon, of course, thinks that Apollo 11 was one of the most inspiring things in all of human history, arguably the most inspiring thing, and one of the most universally good things in history. The level of inspiration this provided to humanity was incredible. He then stated outright that he was not sure SpaceX would exist if not for Apollo 11. Now, I'm sure this could potentially be said about a number of companies, but for SpaceX, we know how highly Elon Musk regards the amazing personalities from the Apollo missions. And one of the most uh, moving pieces of footage in this regard, I think, was from back in 2012 when he was interviewed by 60 Minutes. Now, uh, there's an interesting follow-up to this, which I'll talk about in a moment, but for those of you that have never seen this segment of footage before, just give this 40-second clip a watch. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that, uh, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. Difficult. Now, as a side note here, I've had a lot of people comment over the last few years disappointed in what Neil Armstrong had said. But here's the thing. 60 Minutes had exaggerated the phrasing of this question to Elon, which was pretty unfair. Neil Armstrong had at the time been quite saddened by how the question was raised in the interview and had written into them. And shortly after that, an editor's note was released in June of 2012. As it's pointed out here in this note, when you look at what Armstrong said to Congress, you see that while he was not confident that the newcomers could achieve safety and cost goals in the near term, he did want to encourage them. So as you can see here, um, there was no reference specifically about SpaceX. So very exaggerated indeed. I've placed a link to the editor's note in the description for a quick reference, just for anyone interested in reading the entire statement. Sadly, within a few months of all this, at the age of 82, Neil Armstrong had died while recovering from heart surgery, so there's never been any further information from Neil's point of view on all this. 
So anyway, that was a bit of a sidestep to the main topic of this video, but I think it's important to see the reaction here from Elon Musk when confronted by such a statement. NASA and the Apollo program really is what inspired SpaceX's existence. In the Time article, Elon went on to say that he kept expecting that space exploration would continue beyond the Apollo program. It seemed obvious at the time that humans would have a base on the moon, that we would be sending people to Mars, and I guess also by the time we'd probably have people around the moons of Jupiter. To me as well, you think about how fast we managed to develop the technology and go on to land on the moon. Now fast forward years later, the only way to get humans up to the International Space Station in low Earth orbit is for them to take a launch on a Russian Soyuz rocket. Now the United States in particular haven't had the ability to launch humans to the space station since the space shuttle program ended in 2011. Elon is totally right here. No one would have expected this outcome after living through the Apollo program. It's important for us to see progress. It's important to keep expanding our reach to other worlds and become a multi-planet species. We should feel inspired for the future, and this is why so many of us follow SpaceX and Elon Musk so closely. Back before SpaceX was even conceived, he originally wanted to do a motivational mission called Mars Oasis, which would land a small greenhouse on the surface of Mars. This greenhouse would contain seeds in a dehydrated nutrient gel, which would then hydrate after landing. He talked about how awesome it would be to have this incredible shot of green plants against a red background. The goal of this idea, of course, was to get the public excited again about space exploration, hopefully enough so that Congress would feel motivated to designate more funding for NASA and kickstart a new era in space exploration. To do this, Elon visited Russia a few times simply because the launch costs for such a greenhouse mission was really too expensive with American rockets. Russia at the time were in the process of decommissioning a number of intercontinental ballistic missiles. So what did Elon want to do? Oh, you know, he wanted to buy them. Sadly, after much negotiating, they kept on raising the price on him. Uh, Elon was at this point really just starting to understand how much cost and bureaucracy was involved in the industry. And he'd also come to the realization that regardless of future government funding, NASA simply did not have a reasonable cost partner or cost partners that would ever allow progress in space flight with any realistic amount of funding. Every orbital class rocket at the time was pretty much fully expendable and very costly. The space shuttle was partly reusable, but the cost of reuse was so high, it really barely counted. Perhaps with that similar paradigm and enough funding, humans may have had a similar Mars landing and return, but it seemed very unlikely that there would end up being any kind of permanent base on Mars or on the moon. After coming to this realization, Elon decided Okay, I gotta try building a rocket company, and it was at this point, of course, that SpaceX was born. In the interview, Jeffrey Kluger asked, if the Elon Musk of 2019 could talk to all of the heroes of the 1960s, if you had one piece of advice to give them, whether it was technological, spiritual, salesmanship, long-term vision, what would it be? And Elon replied that Von Braun in particular really knew what he was doing. His plans were for reusability, but those plans were stymied. It doesn't matter how you skin the cat, you just have to get reusability done. It's so insane the way rockets work today. It would be like if you got a plane and the way you get to your destination is to just bail out with a parachute over the city in question and your plane just crash land somewhere. That's how essentially rockets work today with the exception of the Falcon 9. This is completely bonkers. So this is why full and rapid reusability is the holy grail of access to space and it's a fundamental step towards it. Without this, we can't become a multi-planet species. We can't have a base on the moon or a base on Mars. So another question asked was when Elon thought the next boot prints would show up on the moon. Now, this is where the interview with Elon started to get super interesting. He replied saying, 
This is going to sound pretty crazy, but I think we could land on the moon in less than two years. Certainly with an uncrewed vehicle, I believe we could land on the moon in two years. So then maybe within a year or two after that, we could be sending crew. I would say four years on the outside. Now, this to me is pretty nuts. Obviously, we are only at the very early prototype phase of the Starship. A lot of talk is going on around Super Heavy right now in regards to um, new engine configurations. There are many plans being made, such as the recent applications uh, by SpaceX for construction permits and environmental assessments related to Starship changes around Kennedy Space Center at Pad 39A. Even with all this going on, you kind of need to wonder if we are really that close to having a version of Starship and Super Heavy that would be capable of landing on the moon unmanned within two years. That's of course unless there is some more surprising news coming in Elon's next Starship update. He recently said that a new detailed announcement of Starship will be coming on August 24th, where there will be explanations along with the pros and cons of each design decision. So we're all very much looking forward to learning some more there. The next question on everyone's mind is who will be in the next set of boots on the moon? Would it be NASA astronauts? Would it be someone else? Elon said here that if it were to take longer to convince NASA and the authorities that we can do it versus just doing it, then we might just do it. It may literally be easier to just land Starship on the moon than to try to convince NASA that we actually can do it. I mean, how great is this? This is why so many of us love what SpaceX are doing. They're innovating so quickly that they could foreseeably bypass NASA's upcoming mission altogether and land on the moon before them. One thing's for sure, it's going to be an awesome ride watching all of this play out. A permanent lunar base on the moon as a first step to Mars would be amazing. This is a way to prove that we are ready for the next huge step to Mars. We need people with experience and a huge range of technology to get this done. Everything from sustainable living in low gravity and low or zero atmospheric pressures, from refueling systems to power generation, we need loads of experience with it all. And what better experience than a permanent base on the moon? If Starship and Super Heavy really are going to have this capability within a few years, it does seem that they will also be rapidly making the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy redundant. Now, although that seems a little sad in a way, when it comes down to it, this is what a great company does. They make their own products obsolete and they do it rapidly. We see this with tech companies all the time. We may perhaps soon see the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy and Dragon in a museum, and probably much sooner than anyone might have thought. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do take a second to like and share. If you have any comments or questions, please do drop them down in the comments below. And as always, a huge thank you to my very awesome quality control squad listed here. If you're interested in these space topics and you'd like to help out, please do follow my Discord link in the description and join us all in there. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my Starship Hop video from the other week. This has been really amazing. We're really looking forward to the next hop where we're going to see the Starship rise up above that 200 meter mark. It's going to be amazing. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.